to bring to bring in to light uh, the real physics behind why life forms. Uh, I think it's required to place stars at the center. Um, the general theory states that stars cool and die, and all the chemicals that are combined eventually form life. As well, um, completely independent of uh, Jeremy England, I'll read about him in a second here, is that stars are dissipative systems in the general theory. They're not in equilibrium. Okay, I'll go ahead and read this out so people are fully aware of what's going on here. I'll, I'll link it to the bottom of the page as well. <clears throat> says here, do stars fit the definition of dissipative systems? A dissipative system, number one, is thermodynamically open, which means it exchanges matter and energy. Number two, it operates far from thermodynamic equilibrium. Number three, has symmetry breaking. Number four, forms chaotic structures. And number five, has interacting particles forming long-range correlations. And it says here, right below it, the sun and all stars. Number one, are thermodynamic open systems. They exchange matter and energy, no matter what stage of evolution they're in. Of course, younger stars, which are more energetic, exchange more matter and energy because, you know, they're really... They're really young and hot, and they eject lots of solar wind, and Earth as well, far beyond that stage. Um, number two, they operate far from thermodynamic equilibrium. Outer space is 2 Kelvin. The sun is around 5770 Kelvin at the surface. And remember this for the Jeremy England talk, I'll refer to uh, it being a heat bath, which means the energy is leaving the star and being absorbed by by outer space. It's not even really absorbed, it's just is ejected into outer space and that's where all the heat goes. That's where all the particles go. That's how a star evolves. It, it rejects all of its matter and heat back into outer space. Number three, symmetry breaking manifests as coronal mass ejections, solar granules, weather, and even life, which forms well into the evolution given they do not evolve too fast. Of course, that's also inside of the, the, the Taylor threshold. I named that after uh, Baz Taylor. I'll have to do more work on that. Number four, the stars are chaotic. The sun's surface is a wonderful example. And number five, the interacting particles are the solar wind. And you can even consider gravity as a long-range correlation. I wouldn't say it's dominated by particles like gravitons, but it is long-range correlation. And below that, I review it a little bit in further in depth. This delves into the most hideous mistake in solar astronomy, the assumption that the sun is in thermodynamic equilibrium. It is not. It is a dissipative system far from therm thermodynamic equilibrium. The mistake is rooted in astronomers assuming there is a sun inside the sun. And they are also solving for those equations, completely forgetting that the sun is far from thermal equilibrium on its outside, and it's in outer space where matter and energy are exchanged freely. What should also be noted is that since stars are the second largest dissipative systems in a the galaxy, they beget smaller dissipative systems, such as hurricanes, thunderstorms, convection, life, as they are created themselves from galaxy birthing, it says here, quasars are the largest dissipative system. Uh, there might be bigger dissipative system, but, but quasars are the largest ones that I know of in radio galaxies. As well, it says here, Isla Pergongain, I don't know how to pronounce his name, was awarded the Nobel Prize in Chemistry for work on dissipative systems, yet did not realize the Earth and life itself is a result of a single star's dissipative nature. Stars themselves are irreversible systems, so the arrow of time becomes apparent as all life and nature as we are aware of rest on the dissipative systems that created us and currently support life. So essentially what I'm saying here is that the star makes the life. Because the star is the over the encompassing dissipative system that gravitationally collapses on itself. Enough of that. And I also 
wrote another paper, The Non-Equilibrium Principle of Life Formation. And this, I'm not going to read this out, but I just want to go over it quite quickly, is that to form life, you need large non-equilibrium structures. If something is in equilibrium, thermal, chemical, or whatever, nothing is going to happen, okay? You need something to be off balance in order for something like life to show up. If it's balanced, there's nothing to push it to to make up for the difference. So I wrote up that paper. It's very easy to understand. And to tie this all together, and I've read everything that that I could find concerning Jeremy England. Um, I'll link this to the to the page. I don't want to read the whole thing out because, well, number one, it's a whole shitload of stuff here, but. Um, his big thing is dissipative, driven, adaptive organization. Meaning, the star is, he's trying to connect um, biology, microbiology, and physics together. Um, it says here, the formula based on established physics indicate that when a group of atoms is driven by an external source of energy, like the sun or chemical fuel, and surrounded by a heat bath, like the ocean or atmosphere, it will often gradually restructure itself in order to dissipate increasingly more energy. And then he also argues at the bottom here, thus England argues that under certain conditions, matter, were sp ma matter will spontaneously self-organize. And... I've read a lot of this stuff so far, and I, I can't find it anywhere, but he doesn't actually provide an actual physical reason, or physical, like, um, energy source to make life possible, and that physical energy source is gravitational collapse. It's the star c collapsing on itself, and every single type of chemical... A reaction that's spontaneous, every single type of electrical interaction, it's all fueled by the star crushing itself. And all the weird kind of structures that can arise from that over many billions of years. So the external source of energy is the star itself as it collapses over billions of years. And it's surrounded by a heat bath. He says here like the ocean or atmosphere? No. The heat bath is outer space. The heat bath isn't really even a heat bath because it doesn't actually absorb the energy per se. It just completely does away with it. You know, you can outer space is like infinite, man. You can you can pour all the energy and matter you want into it, and it's not going to raise a single degree. It's 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 infinite like that. So that's 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 one thing I should write down in the future. And um, of course. Uh, these types of ideas that uh, Mr. England is proposing here are going to be used by the by the evolution people to ridicule the anti-evolution people, and I, I I don't think that's a very snarky way of of doing business. Uh, let people not believe in evolution if they want to. Who cares? They're, let them have their own ideas. Just just keep just keep working on the ideas. And keep them as uh, well intentioned as possible, and and don't don't include all the snark against the religious folk. I don't I don't think that's I don't think that's a healthy human thing to do. Just work on your ideas, and people want to uh, look at them and be enlightened by them. Then that's it. But yeah, hopefully, you know, this guy is considered uh, as Jeremy England, the next Charles Darwin. Sure. Why not? Next Charles Darwin all the way. Go for it, bud. I hope I hope to see more of, of his stuff in the future and I hope that he can fully understand what happens uh during the processes concerning the evolution of life as it ties into evolution of a star itself. You know hopefully my readers and listeners can also understand that. And that that's the most important thing is that the earth the earth made us, but the earth as it stands right now wasn't earth-like. It was very, 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 very different, and very different combinations 
and we're finding that out by you know studying the exoplanets. All right, I'll link these papers to the bottom. Uh, hope you all had a happy Thanksgiving, and uh, I will see you later.